Oh, okay, well, there we are. <laughs> Best made plans, that's fine. Um, so, hello, I'm Clem Cooper, and I'm the Community Archaeology Manager for Oxford Archaeology, one of three organisations that make up COPA, and uh, we worked for Fusion on behalf of HS2 in the central area. And um, uh, I'm Kaz Adams, or Caroline Adams, and I work for Cotswold Archaeology. I'm the Outreach and Community Engagement Officer, again, um, you know, part of COPA. Right, so um, we're going to be talking a bit about um, a, a project that we did um, sort of during uh, the third lockdown. Um, but actually, following on from uh, Kate Clark's um, sort of lead with her um, initial uh, introduction yesterday, um, we're going to talk a little bit about kind of inspiration for this project. Um, so I've been in this role for, for nearly six years, and when it came to initially designing this project, and we, those conversations started BC, before COVID, um, I kept coming back to some insights that I gained on a, a project I did with a, a primary school in Cambridge some years ago. Um, thanks to a very engaged um, head teacher and governor, um, I sort of worked with... Um, the school to prepare a series of workshops um, in consultation with individual class teachers. So to ensure that there were curriculum connections and that the content could be used as a springboard um, for the rest of their classroom work. And the workshops were used um, to inspire a whole school participatory performance. When this was initially Propose. I wasn't quite sure how this was going to work, but um, they invited parents into the school to come and visit each of the classrooms in turn, and they did a whole range of fantastic things, um, displays, songs, crafts, um, and so visitor engagement. So parents were herded around the school um, speaking uh, to each classroom in turn. Um, and it was wonderful for me to go back, having done some initial workshops, to go back and um, so sort of see the different ways in which the pupils and their teachers had taken that learning and kind of explored archaeology and their local heritage and reflected on it and were presenting back to me. So um, it was a really nice opportunity to take a back seat and learn from them in return. Fantastic. I'm just going to put this around my neck. Okay, so obviously I've already introduced myself. Um, I've been in my role for just over a year now, um, but um, the experience that I've brought to this role as well, so I'm a qualified primary school teacher um, over a number of years, um, and that combined with my other kind of previous psychological experience, even before that, is kind of given um, my kind of style of teaching and engaging is very interactive and including working with schools is very cross-curricular as well, style of teaching, which also helps to complement this project as well, obviously working with Clem. Um, so it gives the school um, the chance to learn and develop their understanding for a variety of mediums which can link into different topics that, topics that they might be learning, into different obviously subjects that are learning in school. So you can you know, obviously bring in a bit of maths, a bit of English, a bit of geography, um, a, a range of subjects. But it also gives the school the flexibility to adapt kind of their learning style and also for us to give them the flexibility to do that as well. Um, uh, according to their own preferences and their own topics that they're currently doing in the school. Um, so this experience is one of my first teaching experiences um, uh, as part of my current job with Cotswold Archaeology. Um, and uh, it's been wonderful to work in partnership with others, obviously including Clem, um, as well as our, um, outreach, uh, the outreach representatives at Fusion as well. So, Clem um, has um, um, brought some inspiration from previous projects that she's done. And for me, because it was right pretty much at the start of my kind of role with Cotswold Archaeology, it's inspired me to take some of what we've learned as part of this project um, to then um, share that in other projects I've been working on, um, which includes some community kind of projects that we've been working on at Clare Castle in Suffolk, um, currently working uh, with it uh, in Great Yarmouth, and also our uh, project that we've just launched, a three-year project at Kelmscott Manor, just inside Oxfordshire. So, the project beginnings. Um, so this HS2 schools, schools project started in uh, 2021, and as I've already said, we were working alongside two outreach representatives from Fusion on behalf of HS2 and obviously Clem. Um, 
So the fusion representatives were largely coming from a non-archaeological perspective um, and they wanted to involve archaeological subcontractors like ourselves working for obviously kind of COPA, Oxford Archaeology and Cotswold Archaeology so that we can share our experience and knowledge about archaeology directly. Um, so this is where we came in. So this gave us the opportunity to also deliver a positive engagement experience um, by sharing awareness about the HST fusion um, route, um, helping to enthuse teachers and school children about the archaeology on their doorstep. So at the time, obviously, with COVID among us all, we wanted to design and include a, a combination of virtually distance learning, trying to make it as interactive as possible, so that the children could experience the importance of archaeology as much as they could, but also providing, by providing some extracurricular activities. Um, and these came in um, the form of resource packs that Clem and I put together, um, and follow-up activities that teachers could use to kind of complement their topic-based learning in the school. So as part of... Okay, so going back, sorry about this everybody, we just had to amend that for you all. Um, so we really wanted, while we were constructing uh, these series of workshops on behalf of Fusion and HS2, um, we wanted to obviously have involvement and have discussions with the schools themselves to obviously get feedback from them about what they were looking for, how it can complement their learning that they're already doing and, and, and their style of learning in the school. So we did have talks with all the schools beforehand. So over a number of months, four schools were identified um, and contacted based largely along the HS2 route in, in counties like Buckinghamshire and Oxfordshire and Hertfordshire. Um, so, um, we, from the feedback that we got from them, we learned a lot about specific online platforms which are preferable by the school, which we then used. Um, and we shared our plans for the workshops as well, and obviously they gave feedback in return. And this helped us to plan the way ahead and develop the school, the, our relationship with them. So, um, this picture here um, is a picture of a, a mini dig box that we put together as part of the resource pack um, um, for each of the schools in turn. Um, so, in preparation for our first virtual workshops, we put this together and this was delivered to each school and it contains a box with sand, a trowel, archaeological artefacts and instruction cards. And the schools, again from feedback that they gave us about the use of Google Drive and the preference for that, then we put a lot of resources on a Google Drive, um, uh, in a Google Drive folder um, for them. And Clem and I did a bit of film work, didn't we? Yes. Uh, so um, all kind of dressed up in, in, in PPE and things like that. And we had, you know, a script that we were working to. And um, so we put together in an introductory video and a range of our, um, archaeological activities for the teachers that we put all on that Google Drive so that the teachers could access them in advance. Um, and uh, some of these things were then shown before we had our first virtual um, introduction kind of session with the, the, the schools themselves. So this was largely focusing on Key Stage 2 pupils. Um, so Clem and I actually shared the delivery of that first online session in May 2021. Um, including archaeology, how we work, using local news and the findings from along that HS2 route. And then from those follow-up activities that we put on the Google Drive, and the pupils then carried out their own archaeological excavations and activities over several weeks. And so some of the ideas that we put in um, included... Um, um, uh, you know, uh, having a mini excavation. I'll, I'll talk a bit more about those in a, in a minute. Um, but then, as Clem, Clem mentioned about her own experience previously, we asked them to actually have a go at these activities and then present them to us in a medium of their choice. And this could be through a newsreel, it could be through dance, it could be from them through a mini museum display, um, it could be through a number of things, even role play. So I want to show and tell. So not all schools reconnected with us a few weeks later. Um, uh, two schools did, and one of them actually wanted. We had a small window of opportunity um, of, due to COVID with actually going there in person. Um, and I actually attended the in-person kind of session. And the school was amazing. They filled up a whole classroom full of a carousel of um, feedback and activities that they put together. 
um, and the children actually were presenting their work um, to myself and, and my co the, our fusion colleagues as well. Um, so the, the teachers took a step back and the children presented their own work. Um, so there was just an exhibition. And so some of these workstations included a variety of things. So one of them was a packing ex exercise, and this is largely based on the follow-up activities that we sent for delicate artefacts, in this case, biscuits, fragile biscuits. Um, detailed artefact drawing, artefact investigation, and research using objects from their own families. So they got their own families involved to bring artefacts, you know, or what, you know, in many cases, they were quite old objects as well, from home. So they were using their families too. And they actually organised their own mini dig, and the children were dressed in PPE. They had the hard hats, they had their vis vests and everything, and they were really engaged in it. And the feedback we got from that particular head teacher, and she's been in touch with us even throughout the last year, um, we had a glowing kind of um, review, um, uh, particularly as we were their first visitors, um, obviously due to COVID, that academic year. So it, there was a real buzz in the room. So the school seemed to, this school seemed to operate differently to the other schools um, uh, involved in the project. Um, they had a very enriching, engaging style, a topic-based learning approach, which I think really showed in wanting to get us in to showcase their work. Um, and they really invested their approach in the project as well and became really involved. And they took their time to obviously show the work that they'd done. So on to another i just wanted to quickly show you so it's a bit hard to see this this is actually a screenshot of a, a, a pdf of multiple images of um work that, that was done by another school and um, that we worked with so this was um this work was presented to us to, to myself actually virtually and the children again were showcasing their work and what I love with this, it was really clever the way they did this. So another school kind of twisted it slightly. So they were focusing on what future archaeologists might think from our 21st century lives. So they were taking objects, you know, crisp packets, snack packets, a whole range of things, and drink cartons, and doing a really detailed study of these objects and what the future archaeologists might think. So I thought that was really good. And obviously, the, the school then invested their time to put together this huge kind of PDF of all of the children's work so that obviously we can use it um, ourselves. So the pupils we worked with weren't the only ones to learn survival lessons. And um, what we want to also do is to reflect in this talk on some of the things that perhaps didn't work quite as well because... Um, Sometimes with these talks at conferences, it's all focused on, on the brilliant um, stuff, but I think it's important when you run these projects to, to have a bit of self-reflection and think about uh, what, what you can improve on and do differently another time. So the project took um, a lot longer to develop and uh, to deliver due to the repeated lockdown. It felt like it was something that was in the planning for a very long time and we had to just kind of react um, to what was going on. Um, so we'd assumed that um, the schools might bite off our hands to um, take up the offer of an extracurricular project whilst they were homeschooling. But in actual fact, they preferred to focus on the routines they'd already established and um, want, wanted to wait to take part um, when they were back in the classroom. The uncertainty of the pandemic was obviously beyond our control, but it was within our power to consult schools and listen to and react to their needs. Most of the schools we worked with were very well practiced at hosting virtual visitors by the time the project was underway, but nevertheless, we had connection issues for a few workshops. So it helped that we had some pre-prepared videos and resources, but some classes lost out on the kind of more interactive nature of the live workshops as they had difficulty hearing. So it might have helped if we'd um, sort of provided some tips and fixes for school staff, anticipation, trying to anticipate some of those issues with the technology, and to have perhaps scheduled a, a backup session in case of problems on the day. Two of the four schools, as Kaz mentioned, um, didn't actually have a show and tell session as originally envisaged. Um, so one school reported that they had staffing issues and just didn't have the capacity for a follow up, either in person or online. Um, we offered to run something with them in the autumn term, but didn't hear back. 
Um, another school ran the sort of the dig activity um, and reported really positive feedback on that, but they hadn't really prepared anything specifically to kind of present to us. Um, so we had a short online feedback session um, which recapped some of the content um, from the first workshop um, and we had a really nice Q&A session with them. But kind of without any anything that they were going to kind of present to us, it, it did lack that dynamism and reciprocation that those schools um, who did do that had had. Um, and we only knew that they hadn't presented anything um, on the day. So with more advance warning, we could have adapted that session and perhaps we could have um, better prepared for that eventuality. Um, the opportunity to take part in this project was advertised to schools by Fusion, um, so who had already got established contacts in the area, and they acted as the main point of contact with school staff. So there was a gradual onboarding of the schools for the project. Um, the first school was approached and had been engaged and involved for about five months, but the last school was only signed up about one month beforehand. So this meant that some staff were really invested, very well prepared, um, more so than others. Um, and by the time the project finished, our contacts in the community engagement team at Fusion um, were coming to the end of their contracts, um, which left us with a bit of a, a gap in that contact with the schools. Um, so um, there wasn't, we had been anticipating that they would be evaluating the project, but actually because of the timeframes involved, they were moving on. and that wasn't fully covered. Um, so in preparing to give this paper, we contacted all four schools again for feedback, um, almost exactly a year on um, from the project. Um, we received a, a response from one school, the most engaged, um, which really highlighted the need to evaluate the project at the point of delivery. So our title for this paper was uh, Learning to Unlock Virtual Engagement for Schools During Lockdown. And here are the, the four keys which helped us not only access our audiences during this project, but we've subs subsequently used to help open doors in our ongoing public engagement work. So firstly, um, we found that we were heavily reliant on schools engaging to take up the offer in the first instance and to make the most of the package on offer. Secondly, um, we discovered that, uh, I should say, digital is not Oh, there we go. Uh, secondly, we learned that although the pandemic has normalised virtual interaction and digital resources, schools still prefer in-person engagement and physical stuff, and who can blame them? Um, thirdly, this led us to create a resource package in consultation with schools, which could be tailored and co-delivered by the teachers. So I think um, really working closely with the teachers who we were relying on to um, sort of deliver that package with us remotely was very, very crucial. Um, and last but not least, um, the teamwork behind our um, joint venture and with clients was really key to this project. It made a big difference to have the support and advice um, of our fusion uh, public engagement specialists and also them being non-archaeologists to just sort of keep us on on track um, to help them sort of uh, develop the relationship and provide um, that relationship with the schools um, but also um, the value of working together so you might I don't know whether this has come across but Kaz and I have only just met in person today we've been working together for a long time and so actually it's it's quite strange thinking we did this we delivered this project together remotely and actually it's really nice to round things off and actually uh, be here together in person. Um, so that concludes our talk. Thank you all for listening. <laughs> <laughs>